The notorious gridlock in Washington escalating with neither side really budging on their stances to the fiscal cliff. We put revenue on the table uh, as long as it's accompanied uh, by significant spending cuts. You can't save the country until you have entitlement programs that fit the demographics of the a changing America in the coming years. It would be good if we did something in the four trillion dollar category of deficit reduction, which is similar to the grand bargain. Sounds like kumbaya time is over. Meanwhile, the American people face a one-two punch of tax increases and spending cuts at the end of the year. Will Washington ever get its act together? And what's at stake for the GOP if it doesn't? Time to bring in our all-star panel. Ford O'Connell, chairman of the Civic Forum PAC and former campaign advisor to McCain. And Democratic strategist Doug Schoen, also a Fox News contributor. Doug, we were talking in the break. Right. You said you don't see people coming together. I, I don't. I mean, there might be a last-minute deal to sort of kick the can down the road and do a framework for cutting spending and entitlements and doing tax reform next year. But what I saw last week from the president and the congressional leadership doesn't give me optimism. No optimism. Ford, I, I want you to hear what the president had to say in Burma where he's traveling today. Mr. President. Mr. President, I cannot just impose my will on Congress, the Congress of the United States, even though sometimes I wish I could. I think that, that that sums it up to me, Ford. You know, it's like, I can't impose my will, but I really wish I could. What do you say? Well, he's imposed his will before. I mean, let's remember Obamacare. Look, he is in control of the White House and uh, the Senate. He's got two of the three legs needed to do this. I think John Boehner's been the bigger adult in this conversation by putting revenue on the table. That said, though, I do think, I do agree with Doug. I think we're going to get some last minute deal. We're going to kick the can down the road. But I will say, if we go over the fiscal cliff, my party's the one that's going to shoulder the blame. Frankly, because 80% well. of Americans fear the, the cliff, but only 26% of Americans actually knows what it entails. Trust me, my party's losing the message game and that's why we're really having to bargain right now do you agree with ford will republicans you be know, blamed you know I, I do agree with ford i think his <laughs> candor and his intellectual honesty are admirable but to me there's a larger point and i mean no disrespect to him by saying this we all lose yeah. if we go over the fiscal cliff uh, the stock market last week notwithstanding this week's gains was a sign of trepidation to me. And bottom line, if we go into some sort of an economic downturn or recession, all sides, all parties, all ideologies lose. And Jerry, we just can't do that. Well, well, Doug, let me say one thing. I'm an American before I'm a Republican. I do agree with you that we all lose if we go over the cliff. All I'm saying is when the finger pointing goes down and we do go over the cliff, my party's the one that's to blame. And right now we're trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together and it ain't working all that well because I, I, right I now agree. we're pointing I think fingers within my party. Comment. Well, to that point, uh, and to both of you, what, what does the Republican Party need to do uh, to, to change the way it's viewed in this country? And Ford, I'll start with you. I think we really have to expand the base. We can't continue to be the party of old white men. Essentially, we have to work and take control of immigration reform, and we have to change our message. We've got to stop the fire and brimstone. Hey, if you don't vote for us, you're a lazy moocher rhetoric. What we need to come up with is, hey, we feel your pain. We are here with you. Stick with us with our pro-growth policies, and the future will be brighter. But I also think we have to get out there, and we really have to educate the masses on what limited government and pro-growth policies mean going forward. But the one thing we can do right now is show Show some leadership, and John Boehner right. needs to really get in there. Well, and, and it's going to be interesting to see if it actually right. works. And Doug, what do you say about that? I, I think Ford's agenda makes a lot of sense, but there's a simple thing they can do now. Go for higher rates, come in and say President Obama will go up a point and a half, two points, but you've got to do real spending and entitlement cut, cuts because Ford is right. If the Republicans hang tough with where they are, they will lose. They have to make the kind of changes Ford described so far. There's no you go along about. with that, Ford? Should uh, the Republicans come across with a one, two, three point uh, income tax percentage uh, increase? I don't like the income tax percentage increase right now because we need a promise to get a larger deal. What I do like is putting revenue on the table by capping deductions at either 25000 or 50000 It's not yet time to give in to our principles for the betterment of America until the Democrats and President Obama are willing to show some leadership as well. All right. I, I have to move to something fun because this fiscal cliff stuff is really getting me down. And that would mean Joe Biden, the vice president, right. had something to say. He was in the area here surveying the damage from the Hurricane Sandy. Here's what he said. <laughs> so as the president of 70 is up here with the governor, we're not going anywhere, Gov. We're, we're, we're not going anywhere. And, uh, and you got a homeboy uh, in the deal who, uh, who, who gets it. 
All right, so he's referring to himself. He's not referring to the president. He's referring to himself because he grew up near the ocean, sure. et cetera, et cetera. But really, can't he elevate the rhetoric just a little bit? You would think both sides would. Look, I, I, his gaps have been, you know, uh, legendary. repeated <laughs> and legendary. You're right. But we really, on both sides, have to elevate the rhetoric. And I really think bipartisanship is a necessity, not an ideal. Ford, what do you say? I, I, Doug, I agree with you. I think that Joe Biden is obviously trying to become the 26th Democratic nominee and trying to piggyback a storm to do it. Let's be honest, it's not going to happen. But I do think we need to raise the level of rhetoric. We need to show some bipartisanship because we've got some real problems facing America right now. All right, quick uh, pro prognostication here to both of you, Ford and Doug. Fast, will we make that December 31st deadline? Ford, you first. Stopgap measure agreement on a larger framework. We're probably going to have something kicking in very soon. Remember, we're brushing up against right. the debt ceiling, so we're going to be back at the table. Yeah, you say yes, but with caveats. Yeah. Limp over the you finish line. I agree with Ford. We're going to kick the can down the road ultimately. Oh, I wish you would have been more <laughs> upbeat. I wish I, I could. <laughs> I wish I could. I'd like to be too. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for coming on. Thank Ford you. and Doug, appreciate your time.